All right, folks, welcome back to another Rev Real Estate Live. My name is Dallin Schultz. I am the president and one of the co-founders of Rev Equity Group. The purpose of these weekly webinars is to help you make educated decisions in investing and more specifically in multifamily investing. That is what our team focuses on. That's what we're most comfortable with. And that's what we want to bring to, to the masses. So I'll share a little bit more about us here in a minute. But just for some quick ground rules, we do uh, we do record this meeting so that we can send it out. And if you have questions, I ask that you type it into the chat box. And then towards the end of the presentation, the last 10, 15 minutes, we open that up for, for Q&A. Um, and the reason we do that is because we, we put together some presentations, a process, information for you to, to really gather and to learn. And sometimes questions can inadvertently take us down a tangent or down a different path. And so um, that's why I just ask that you type the question in to the chat box, and then we can address it towards the end of the webinar. So um, in this week's webinar, I wanted to talk a little bit on how to get started in, in passively investing. And I don't want to talk about the deal, the operator, and all the technical aspects, because we have other webinars on that. What I really wanted to get into today was more on what you need as an individual and the thought process, the mindset, the questions that you should be asking before you even get started. So with that being said, there's three things that I want to touch on today. Number one, being the why. What is your why to get into real estate investing? The second is the how or the process. And then the third is the action or their specific steps. So we'll start walking through these. I'll pose some questions and just get your mind to, to really start, start thinking. Now, before we do that, um, some of you are most of you already are aware of, of my story and kind of how I got started. A few years back, I was working a safe, secure job in the medical field when I injured my leg. Now, at this point, I had just finished uh, nursing school. I had my bachelor's in nursing, started working in the ER. I didn't have any savings because I was a broke college student that just graduated. My wife and two kids at home were relying on me. I didn't have PTO. I didn't have sick time. I had none of those things that would be required to still sustain and provide for my family in the case of this incident. And that scared the heck out of me. That, that, in that instance, I realized that something had to give. And that safe and secure, secure job that I thought I had wasn't there. And so that's what really catapulted me into into real estate investing. And I've realized that there's, there's essentially two different ways people get started in real estate investing. There's those that dip their toes, they get a single family home, maybe once every few years, and they're starting to build up their portfolio over 20, 30 years. And then there's those that hit a breaking point. Maybe they get fired from their job. Maybe they experience a traumatic injury like I did. Maybe they, uh, they lose a loved one that was the, the primary breadwinner for that family. There's this other side that hits this breaking point. For me, it was literally a breaking point as I fractured my leg in two. But these are the people that, in my experience, jump all in. They've, they, they know, they feel and they have that desire to create a better life for themselves and their families and those around them and not put so much weight on an employer or someone else to take care of them. So not saying that one is better than, than the other, but it's just a different approach. So those are some of the things that we're going to be, be touching on. What I'd like to do real quick, I'm going to put a a link in the chat box. This is a quick four question survey. It's anonymous, so I don't know who's posting it. Just a couple questions that I'd ask you to, to go through and answer real quick. And I'll just share a range or share a few of the, um, 
their responses just so everyone can get an idea of where where they're um where they're at in comparison to other people so i just threw it in the chat box feel free click on that and just take 30 to 60 seconds and fill that out for me All right, we got a few coming in, so we'll just give it about 30 more seconds. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and, and share some of these. So the first question I ask is when you hear about real estate investing, what is the first type of investment you think of? So we have residential, single family rentals, multifamily, single family, multifamily rental houses. The reason I pose this question is because it's not uncommon for most people to jump for their minds to jump right to single family investing, because we, it seems a lot more common. It seems a lot more obtainable. <clears throat> and we probably all know people that have done very well <clears throat> in that space. And at Rev, we want to, we want to debunk that. We want to change that mindset and show people and let people know that they can start with multifamily. Our first investment property was a fourplex, not a large multifamily, but it was still a multifamily. And then from there, it just started escalating and scaling. Now we're getting into a hundred plus unit deals in just over a few years. So it's really cool to see how that can happen and how that progress can occur. And, and what we desire is just to inspire, and motivate others to do the same. Do you currently know anyone that owns more than 20 units of multifamily real estate? 75% said yes, 25% said no. Now, the reason I pose this question is because one of the easiest ways to prove yourself wrong is to see somebody else doing it. If you see somebody else doing it, it seems a lot more obtainable, especially if it's someone that you know really close. Um, now, the next question, this is the question that was going through my head as I was laying in the hospital bed, not knowing how I was going to provide for my family financially. If you lost your job or business today, how long could you financially survive? Um, and getting a new job is not an option. So the reason for this question is to really vet and understand for you personally, where your financial situation is. And we had some less than six months, we had some at a year. And some at three plus years. So nobody, nobody in that two to three year range. And, and this is pretty standard across the board every time I've asked this question. So the majority will be within a year or less is what they could sustain themselves and their families with. And that, that can be a scary thought. And we, we naturally... I feel like as, as humans, I, I think we think we have more time than we really do. And we think that we're invincible and that we, we've got the safe, secure job. In reality, any of that could be taken away at any time. 
in a split instance, I just about lost my job. So just having the, the, the foresight, having the, the thought process of looking ahead and trying to be proactive versus reactive is one of those key ingredients to those that are successful in the real estate space. Um, and then what in life energizes you serving others, making money, winning, accomplishing all these things to be achieved in multifamily investing. And that's one of the things that really attracted me in. So I appreciate you all playing along with that. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to share this. Uh, I'm going to share my screen on this PowerPoint. This is a, a here. Make sure I share the right screen this time. All right, here we go. So this is a little activity here. And, and the point behind it is to emphasize the importance of having a system and a process in place. And when people are getting started investing in real estate, I think this is one of the things that they overlook because they often look at how much monthly cash flow can I get? How many units do I want? How many assets under management do I want to achieve in the next 12 months? And having a system and a process in place is critical to all of this and to achieving it. And one of my favorite quotes, I believe it's in the book Traction by Gina Wickman. He says, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And so what we're going to do in this game Everybody has it on their, on their screen <clears throat> or should. What I, I'm going to set my timer for 30 seconds. And all I want you to do is to go through and starting with number one, count up to as many numbers as you can in 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Find the number, count it, move on to the next one. Five seconds. Stop. All right, shout out some of your answers. Or 16. hold up a 16. Yeah. Bruce, you've probably done this exercise with us before. Yeah, but I still went slow because I got, I seen a squirrel, so I got 14. <laughs> So we got 16, 14, what else? Oh, oh. getting ahead of myself get, I mean, here. I got to 10. 10, okay, excellent. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do this again. This time I'm gonna introduce a process in place. So I drew two lines here. So now we're split up into four quadrants. If you look at the top left quadrant, you got your number one. If you look at your top right quadrant, you got number two, bottom right, three, bottom left, four, top left, five. Do you see this process now? So now we're going to start again for 30 seconds. And I want you to do the same process and see what number you get to this time. Ready? Go. Stop. Paul, what did you get? 26. 26. Bruce? 
23. But I, but I don't think there's a number 17. It took me a long time to find it. I thought you were tricking us. That'd be funny. Leave one of the numbers out. <laughs> yeah, early on, like number seven or eight, just leave it out. <laughs> what did you get this time, Emmett? Got up to 17. 17. So as you can see, just about everyone just just about doubled their numbers because once you have a system once you have a process in place it enables you to be much more efficient and this is again one of those things that when people are passively investing when they're looking to get started investing in real estate they overlook this they just want to jump in try to find as many deals as they can get as many doors as they can as many assets under management as they can without spending time and putting in these processes and systems. So if you have to delay that a little bit to put that in place to really help yourself be more efficient and effective, then, then that is the absolute what you need to do. So going from there, from the process, and we'll, we'll come back to this a little bit more. The next thing I want to touch on that we'll introduce, I just want to show this image real quick. Simple target. <clears throat> I use this for a lot of different aspects of my life, and it's very applicable for what we're talking about today. So that bullseye, the blue circle, what you're shooting for, that is the why. Why, why do we do it? Why are you choosing to invest into real estate? What's happening in your life that makes you want to get started yesterday? And then, um, then the outer ring, we have the how that you do it, and that's really the process. And one thing that we'll touch on with the process is that's something that could take weeks, months, maybe even years. It's a, an accumulation of multiple specific actions. Now, the what we do, that's the specific action. Those are things that we can do today. Those are things that we can do tomorrow that won't take a week to accomplish. They're specific actions. And at, at the end of the day, all it takes is for us to commit to move forward with that. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, naturally, as you're, as you're practicing target shooting, it, it's, it's not likely that you're going to hit the bullseye every single time. You've, you've got to start tuning in. You've got to practice. You've got to go through these different processes in order to get there. So we start with the why, because that's really the motivating factor, and then identifying the process and then the specific actions. So we're reverse engineering it. We're working backwards for our plan, but then we're working forward in from the action to the process to the why. So with that, with that, why passively invest? And some questions that you'll, you'll want to consider and ask yourself is what, what motivates you to want to invest? Now, we have clients that we work with that are, that are family people and they want to invest because they want the passive income to improve their quality of life for them and their families. We also have big business owners that already have all the money. Maybe not the time that they want because they're busy running their businesses, but they have money. So why do they choose to invest? Their motivation to invest is going to be geared more towards preservation of capital, overseeing, making sure that their business is backed by a tangible investment. So if there's a downturn in the market or in their business, they're able to still support themselves, their employees, and their families through cash flowing real estate. So there's various different reasons as to why, why people do this. Now, one of the biggest, uh, another question to consider is what is one of your biggest fears that could be prevented if you had this cash flowing real estate? Mm -hmm. And for me, the, it, it's often the fear of failure that prevents people from, from taking action, that fear of failure. And what I like to do is flip the script on that. I like to flip the script on that fear of failure. The fear that motivates and drives me is the fear of not accomplishing those goals. It's the fear of not achieving my true potential, not achieving that, that life that I envision for myself and for my family. 
And then another thing to consider is what specific asset class do you want to invest in? I've touched on this on a previous webinar. You can find people successful in every single asset class. You can find people successful in single family and self-storage and, and retail and the hospitality space. So what asset class resonates with you the most? And really digging in and diving in to gain that clarity is essential before you get started in investing because different asset classes are going to offer different benefits. There's different pros and cons. Now we've chosen multifamily for multiple reasons as our primary asset class. And that's exactly what these webinars are for is to help educate people and let them know the benefits of that. Now, um, so identifying your why, figuring out that bullseye, what it is that you're, you're really aiming for and target is essential. Now you cross over into the, the process. How do you passively invest? And when I say passively invest, I'm not saying, hey, jump on a call with us, review the deal, sign the form, wire the money. That's not the process I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is the process you need to go through individually to be set up to passively invest. And again, the process could take weeks. It can take months. It can take years. Now, there's really... There's really two different ways to uh, to get started or to invest in real estate. You have an active approach and you have the passive approach. Active, you're doing all the day-to-day -day tasks. And so there's, uh, unless you're dedicated full-time, that could be extremely difficult to do. And then there's the other side to passively investing. And when you're passively investing, you let other people do all the heavy lifting and dirty work. And you're at that point, just receiving mailbox money. And so knowing what route fits for you the best, if you're, if you're in the middle of a, a W2 job, it pays good, or you're growing a business, it may not be the wisest decision to go actively in. Now, if that's the goal in a few years, maybe start passively investing to get your toes wet, to better understand the process and how everything goes. And then you can start transitioning more so into an active role. Now, what I've realized in my experience over the last few years connecting with investors is that it often starts up here with investing. And that little survey we took at the beginning, it uh, we talked about or it showed that most people were leaning towards single family investing. When they first hear about real estate investing, the first thing that comes to mind, single family investing. That doesn't have to be the case. And it often is the case because of, of what we're seeing, what we're hearing and what we believe. So in my opinion, you've got to start with the mindset. You've got to start with number one, do you desire it? Do you desire this, this life of freedom of cash flow? Do you desire this, uh, this back in your business with, with cash flowing real estate? Number two, do you believe it? You can desire it, but if you don't believe it, that the, the belief is what, where the visualization comes in. The belief is, is what's going to motivate you to take action. And then number three, I think this is the most important one. Do you expect it? If you desire, so let's say it's 10 grand a month and in passive income, and you believe that it can happen, do you expect it? Because belief and expectations are slightly different. Expectations, you know, you're going to get it no matter what. It might take time. It might take longer than you expected, but that expectation, when you have the desire, belief, and expectation, those three things really motivate you to take the action that's essential and required to have you hit your goals, to have you get you closer to your why. So when it comes to the process, I suggest start with your mindset. If your mindset's not there, if you don't believe you can get into this game, if you don't believe that you can achieve a certain level of financial freedom and you don't desire it, then it's not going to happen. You've got to start with that mindset. 
And then the next, the next uh, important aspect to, to the process, I would suggest is your network. You've got to get out there. You've got to connect with people doing what it is that you want to be doing. Robert Kiyosaki is famous for saying your network is your net worth. And there's probably a lot of other people that have, have shared that quote as well, but I truly live by that. The only, listen, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, hardly ever. And that, that's honestly the rooms that I want to be in. But I've been able to experience the successes that I have because of the network and the people that I've associated myself with. So you start with the mindset and then you get around your network. Third thing is the education. And education can really affect your, your um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your risk tolerance, right? So if you consider that you have this much risk in, 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 a, in a subject, we'll say real estate, anytime you start educating yourself and getting around the, night, the right network, what happens is that this gap starts closing in. So what initially appeared extremely risky to you is now shrinking because you have the right relationships, you have the right network, and you have the right education. And when you, when you couple all those, when you bring all those together, the risk tolerance or the, the, the part that seems risky actually decreases. And when that happens, two things happen. Your confidence increases and your courage increases. And those are two things that are required to take action necessary to get you closer to your goals. If you're not, if you're not taking that action and you're just stuck in this analysis paralysis, people are going to blow by you as they're achieving their goals. So you got to start with the mindset. You got to start with the network and then you start educating yourselves. People often will jump right into education and bypass the mindset and the network. And from personal experience, I'm telling you that that's backwards. Start with the mindset, then the network, then the education. Education will come. I'm learning every single day, every single week. I've learned a lot over these last few years, but I don't profess to know it all, not even close. And those that are very active in the space will agree and say the same thing. Education, knowledge, it's an ongoing process. So if you start with that, you'll never get out of it. At the end of the day, you just got to take action. So up to this point, we've touched on why, your why, and some questions to consider. And then how, or the process, the last thing I want to touch on are the steps. What are the steps? What, I, I'm sorry, what steps are required? And these are the specific actions. As a reminder, these are things that can that you can do today. So for example, the process, let's say somebody struggles with a mindset and they're like, hey, I, there's no way I could do multifamily. That's only set aside for a certain type of person. And that's not me. My family never owned it. My parents never owned it. There's just no way I can do it. The process of overcoming that limiting belief doesn't happen overnight. That takes time. So what action can you take today to start working on overcoming that limiting belief? Maybe it's as simple as picking up a book. Maybe it's as simple as calling someone that you know that's in the space and just asking, hey, how did you get started? How did you work past these limiting beliefs to get to where you are today? One of the most powerful things, and this goes back to your network, is who do you know that is already active and successful in the space that you want to be in? And if you don't have that identified or you can't think of someone, then that's, that's just showing you how important having a network is. So again, a specific action can be as simple as going on meetup.com and saying, hey, there's a real estate meetup tonight. I'm just going to go and check it out see who I meet. That's something that could be done today. That is a specific action. Buying a book, choosing to read a book is a specific action. Telling yourself every single day that I can do this is a specific action as you're feeding your mind with those affirmations. Um, 
how long have you been considering investing in real estate? Make an investment. There's people that have been looking at single family that have been looking at multifamily for years. And they seem to, to, to all say the same thing. Oh, I'm waiting for a good opportunity. Uh, I'm waiting for the downturn in the market, or I'm just waiting for a, a, a good deal. And they've been saying that same thing for two or three or four years. So is it the market that's preventing them from getting into the next deal or is it themselves? So action is one of the biggest things that you can, you can do. And that's essential to get this ball rolling, to get you closer to your why taking that specific action. Uh, one of my favorite things is attending conferences. I'll go to a conference multiple times a year just to get around hundreds of people that have the same goals as I do. That's important to me. That's important to me. And I want them or I, I, I need them to keep me motivated, to keep me energized so that I can keep working towards my why. Now, some of these conferences, you can get in for as little as a hundred bucks, 200 bucks for a two or three day conference that's exclusively focused in on what it is that you want to learn about. Take action, make an investment in yourself before you invest in real estate. So when you couple all these things together, your why, the how, and the what, this mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically sets you up to make wise decisions when passively investing in real estate. And, and this isn't, like I said, this isn't a, hey, this is how you invest with us or how you invest in a deal. We talk about that on other webinars. This webinar was specific to really get into more of your mindset, to get into what's holding you back from getting involved. And the last thing that I want to close with and the question I want to pose is what systems do you have in place to push you closer to your goals? We did that numbers game and you all saw how more, much more efficient you were once a system was in place and a certain process was in place. If you do not have those systems in place, you're going to keep tripping yourself up. You're going to, it's going to take longer for you to hit your goals and you're going to get burned out. And then it might be easy to just say, Hey, this, this wasn't for me. It wasn't worth it. When in reality, that's not the case. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So I appreciate you all for coming out on this webinar this week. This will now conclude the recording session. And following that, we will open it up for live Q&A. And then we also have a resource that we'd like to provide to those of you that were on our call. Appreciate you coming out.